Hey, Karen, are you ready to go? Oh, I am. I wasn't sure if you were ready, Ed. I just needed one more item in the pantry here. I needed my apple cider vinegar. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to Karen Sizzle and Spice. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad you're here today. If you're like me, and if you have a vegetable garden in your yard, or you visit a farm stand often because it's the middle of August, you're gonna find that the tomatoes are abundant. So I do have my garden. I've got several videos about gardening in the veggie garden. You can look those up. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna make tomato jam today. Tomato jam. I made it once a couple weeks ago. I could not believe how delicious it was, how many different variations of it you can make, and how many different things you can use it for. Tomato jam. Let's think. I wrote it down because there's so many things. You can use it as the tea in your BLT. Who doesn't love that? On a scrambled egg sandwich, it would taste fantastic. We had it on grilled cheese last week with fresh mozzarella and basil. On a French crusty bread, it was fantastic. You can add this to chili. You could use it as a pizza sauce. It's just delicious. So all we're gonna need today is, I'm using about four pounds of tomatoes. We'll be using salt, of course, and pepper, some apple cider vinegar, some brown sugar. We're gonna use a little bit of white granulated sugar. We'll be using some ginger, some cumin, which gives it a great smoky flavor, just a touch of red pepper flakes, and some smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is just delicious. So let me show you how we'll get this one going. You know, for me, one of the best things about making this tomato jam is the thought of in the middle of winter, opening up one of these jars and having like a taste of summer in a jar in the middle of the winter. Cause I don't know about you guys, I don't buy a lot of tomatoes during the winter cause they're just eh. I mean, I think the best kind that I buy is probably like grape tomatoes. The other ones, I mean, sometimes they just take, taste like wax. So anyway, the way I'm gonna store this jam is I got these eight ounce little cute little canning jars. See, they have a rubber grip in here. Uh, on Amazon, I got them. I'll post the link for that in case you're interested in doing this for yourself. But this is the perfect size jar for this tomato jam and they can, you can freeze these, which is fantastic. So I'll probably have a freezer full of a dozen or so of them before the end of the summer. Now, just so that you know, about every pound of tomatoes uh, makes one of these jars. So four pounds, I'll probably have four to five jars of the jam when I'm done here. So what we're gonna do to get started here is I'm gonna create an assembly line of sorts. I have my tomatoes ready to go here. I have a big pot of water that I'm gonna bring to a boil. Then I'm gonna have a bowl here that's full of ice water. This is my garbage bowl. And this is the pot that I will finish cutting the tomatoes after they've been peeled, and I'll put them in this pot for simmering to make this uh, tomato jam. I'll be right back when the water boils. So my water is boiling now. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna get my assembly line going here. I'm gonna take each one of these tomatoes, and I'm cutting like an X in the top of it by the stem area. This way it will come away from the meat of the tomato easier. I'm using this tool for safety so I'm not getting too close to that boiling water. I'll put in a couple tomatoes at a time. And while that boils for only a minute or so, uh, we'll take it out of there. So in the meantime, I'm gonna cut an X into all of the top of these tomatoes. It will make the peels come off even easier once I've boiled them. Okay. This is why I'm glad I have this large cutting board as well. And if you come in closer here, Ed, you can see it's grooved. These tomatoes are really juicy and I'd have quite a mess on the counter here if it wasn't gonna get that juice from, keep that juice from going over. So look at that, it only takes a moment 
I'm gonna put this right into the ice water there. Right into the ice water bath. You see how this is like an assembly line. Okay, I only put two in there. So I'm gonna take a couple more, put them into the hot water. And while those boil for a moment there, I can take these right out of the water bath. Ice water. Look at how easy these peels come right off of here. This is one gigantic tomato, isn't it, Eddie? It sure is. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. But the peels come right off, which is why I have my garbage bowl right here. Got everything I need here right by the assembly line so that I don't have to be running back and forth to my garbage can. I mean, this one is really humongous. Looks like three tomatoes. <laughs> I think it was, yeah. And then I'm just cutting these tomatoes up once the skins are all gone. It's a nice little bite-sized pieces. See, look at all the juice that I'm getting here on this board. It's a good thing that this board is grooved or ooh, I'd have a mess. And then I'm just using my scraper to pick this up and to put it right into my Dutch oven, I think they call these. This is the pot that I'm gonna boil all these tomatoes in. I've got a couple more tomatoes that have been in the boiling water for probably just a minute or so. I'm putting them right into the ice bath so I'll be able to handle them. And the skins come off so easy that way. So while I give that just a minute, I put some of the new tomatoes into the pot. You see how it's like a little assembly line. While that, uh, I'll do these last few tomatoes. I'll put the X's in them. And these will be ready to go in the next, the next round here. Okay. Take a couple more. Here, that one has a piece that's bad. Toss that. There we go. I'm going to take a tomato out of here, out of the ice water. It's amazing, isn't it? Just how easily the skins come right off. Just okay, you guys. I've got all my tomatoes cut up into my pot. I'm going to turn my burner on about medium. We are gonna let this come to a simmer, but first I'm gonna add all the delicious goodness now to make this jam. We're gonna add just over a cup of brown sugar. I'm adding about three tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now this is a recipe you absolutely want to taste to tweak. So uh, in a couple hours, you're gonna to wanna to try this to see if you wanna adjust your flavors at all, depending on your likes. I'm gonna start with about four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and be careful with this. Apple cider vinegar is pretty strong, but four tablespoons for four pounds is, is really good. So here we got one, two, three, four. Then we're gonna use one teaspoon of ginger. I got the ground ginger here. And remember now, ginger is pretty strong too. So be careful that you don't use too much. I'll start with a teaspoon and I'll be tasting it along the way to see if I need any more of that. Then I'm gonna use one teaspoon of cumin. Cumin is so delicious and smoky. Love cumin. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of that in. Maybe a little extra, cause I really love it. And you'll get to know these flavors too, so you can add whatever you want. Now I'm gonna use about a half a teaspoon to start of smoked paprika. Again, add more or less according to your taste. And then I'm gonna add just about a quarter teaspoon of some crushed red pepper flakes. And again, if you like it spicier, go ahead and add more. I'm just gonna add a bit. And then of course we need some good shakes of pepper. I love pepper. And we're gonna add in a few uh, pinches of salt, coarse salt, and tomatoes beg for salt. So I'm gonna give this a good stir. 
And you guys, this is gonna take a while on the stove. You're gonna want to make this on a day when you're gonna be home because it just has to sit on the back of the stove and simmer for a few hours. And you will watch how this mixture will uh, be concentrated like in half. You'll only get in half of what's left right now because as it simmers, oh my God, all those flavors marry and oh, it's gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then I'm gonna let it simmer for a couple hours and I'll show you what it looks like then. You can see how much this has reduced. It's been on for about two and a half hours now. It just a simmer like this. And uh, you can see the line here of where it started out and that it's really becoming very concentrated. What I'm looking for is when I move the spoon, I want the mixture not to go back together. It still is, so we'll still leave it on for a little bit longer, but OMG, it looks wonderful, and I tasted it. Ugh, it's gonna be fantastic on several things. Tomato jam, guys. So after three hours now, you can see this is reduced, I would say by two thirds. It's only about one third left of what I started with, and I think that it's perfectly concentrated now. You see how you can see the bottom of the pot and it doesn't go together immediately? That's when you know it's ready. I'm gonna turn this off, let it cool, and then I'll put it in jars. These are eight ounce canning jars that I got for this tomato jam. So I just poured it in my two cup measuring cup and I'll just pour the mixture into each jar. and I'll fill them all up. <laughs> it's our favorite time. Yep. Taste testing time, you guys. So what I did was I just slathered this tomato jam all over a mound of cream cheese on a plate here. So we're gonna try this now to see how it tastes. Go ahead and try that and tell me what you think on the wheat thins. <laughs> mm, that's good. It's very good. I've never had tomato jam in my life. And let me tell you, I'm sorry I missed all those years. <laughs> it is delicious. It's really great. You know, I so love a food that you put it in your mouth and you taste one thing and then you taste another. And then even after you've swallowed it, you taste this other taste in your mouth. And this is one of those foods because I can taste the ginger in there and the sugar and the smokiness of the paprika and the cumin. It's just fantastic. You guys have got to make this. It might seem like a lot of work, but it's really not except for cutting the tomatoes. The rest is just letting it sit on the stove top and simmer all day long. Your house will smell fantastic and you'll be so grateful. You can put this in the freezer. I'll, I'm sure for at least six months, even a year, it'll be fine to eat. And you're going to have that explosion of flavor in the middle of the winter. So we hope that you come back often to visit us. And thanks so much for being here today. Be sure to subscribe and remember... You eat with your eyes first, so you may as well make it beautiful. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.